Authentication is one of the most important parts of building web applications and services. Sadly, it's never really been easy. There have been really cool solutions built in the space, things like Next Auth, Auth0, Clerk, so many more. The majority of these things are services though, companies that you pay to run your authentication and authorization, manage the auth data, or auth data on their servers that you connect to. There's a couple frameworks that have decent built-in authorization and authentication solutions, but all of them are pretty limited. Generally speaking, even though OAuth is a standard, there haven't been very many standard implementations of the auth layer, both for the client and the server. The best experience I've personally had owning my auth has been with the next auth package that made it incredibly easy to connect my or to connect an auth layer to my database in my application and immediately have access to that uh, or and immediately have access to user data with authorization on the client and the server trivially. However, that solution was baked very heavily around Next.js. Thankfully, Ballas and crew have been working incredibly hard to improve next auth and get it to a point where it's not just useful for Next devs, but it's actually useful for all full stack web devs. Today, Ballas announced auth.js, a new auth package that has an agnostic core so that you can theoretically build a binding for any framework using one backend for the authorization and authentication, and all clients can now access it. Super exciting stuff. The main reason that this dropped today is that the first binding is SvelteKit auth. So at auth slash SvelteKit is the package for using auth.js in SvelteKit. So you can use your existing next auth backends, connect them to this and have auth that works both for your Next.js front end and for your SvelteKit front end. Super, super cool. Next auth is a great package and seeing this level of growth and this opportunity for other frameworks to build on it and learn from it is just so cool. Yeah, I am genuinely super hyped for this. It looks almost identical to how we use it. You can have a hooks.server.ts file that is the server code that generates all of the endpoints. And then you can simply import the sign in and sign out functions to be called anywhere in your app and have working, sign in, and sign out. Literally just add the on click, sign in, name of the provider, it works. How do you actually get your auth data though? Apparently it comes in from parent, which makes sense because you'd put the auth at the top level and now all pages have access to that. Pretty cool stuff. Right now, the big missing piece, and I think it's important to know, still no React Native support. Because React Native doesn't use cookies and doesn't give you as much control over requests, it's hard to add in a cookie-based and JWT-based authorization authentication solution. I know that the team's working hard on it. And once we have proper React Native support inside of Auth.js, we'll be able to do crazy things with projects like Create T3 Turbo, giving you a full stack, backend and frontend and mobile application framework with authorization working across all the platforms, a shared API for everything. And all of this with type safety inferred from back end to front end. Authorization is one of the most important pieces of this puzzle. And next is a very important core dependency of create T3 app and the T3 stack. This is an exciting improvement in how modular of things we can build with these parts. Huge shout out to Ballas and the team working on auth.js. I can't wait to hear more from y'all. And I'm really excited for the React Native findings. Thank you all for watching this video. YouTube thinks you're going to like the one being recommended in the corner there. I tend to agree with them. The algorithm's pretty good. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do. It helps us out a ton. Till the next one. Peace, nerds.